Do another example. Um, this time we've got an initial value problem, right? So we're um, we're going to use antiderivatives, and again the idea here, you know, when we're doing indefinite integral, we take the indefinite integral term by term. We get our sort of arbitrary constant of integration. Uh, be a different one for each, right? Uh, and then we can apply our initial conditions to figure out what those constants um, should be. So really, it's three initial value problems in one, because we're going to do one for the x component, one for the y component, one for the z component, but we'll, we'll try to do them all at the same time, right? OK, so first thing we'll do is we'll say that um, r prime of t should be the integral of r double prime of t dt. So that's going to look like this, you know, 2t plus c1, and then sine t plus, say, c2, and then 6t squared plus some c3. Okay. Now, r prime of 0, on the one hand, we can just plug in t equals 0, and we're going to get uh, c1. Uh, C2, oh, that's convenient, C3, and that's also supposed to be uh, 5, 3, 0, right? Um, so now we know, because, of course, two vectors, if two vectors are equal, the corresponding components have to be equal. So we know that C1 is 5, C2 is 3, C3 is 0. Good. Now we can calculate R of t. R of t will be the uh, indefinite integral of r prime. And so again, we just apply the indefinite integral term by term, starting here, right? So 2t integrates to t squared. Now c1 is actually 5, right? So that 5 is going to integrate to a, let's say, 5t. Um, and we're going to get a new constant. Let me, I don't know, let's call it, uh, I don't know, b1 this time. Okay, so t squared coming from here. The 5t comes from here because c1 is 5, plus we get a constant of integration. Okay, now sine t integrates to negative cosine t. Um, c2 is actually 3. So antiderivative of 3 will be 3t. And we might get another constant. B2. Okay, and in the last term, 6t squared, that's going to integrate to 2t cubed. Uh, C3 was 0, so we don't get a term from that, uh, but we do get possibly a B3. We might get a constant there, right? Okay, so now um, we can figure out what these constants b1, b2, b3 are because we know that r of 0 on the one hand is going to be b1 and then minus 1 plus b2 and then b3. But r of 0 is also given to us as minus 7, minus 1, and 2. So b1 has to be minus 7. Uh, b2 must be 0 to leave us with the minus 1. B3 has to be 2. Okay, So we can finally, we can plug those values in. And we can say what our vector valued function is going to be. It's going to be t squared plus 5t minus 7. Then it's going to be minus cosine t plus 3t, b2 is 0, and then we're going to have 2t cubed plus b3, which was 2, okay? And we've solved our problem.